so that we can start the discussions. It is a very big room and we are not that many people in the room, so I would encourage you to move closer to the stage to create a more intimate feeling for the discussions. My name is Marcus Kummer. I am Vice President with responsibility for public policy at the Internet Society and I am also the Interim Chair of the Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group who prepared the program for this meeting. We have a very distinguished panel to discuss the role of governments in multi-stakeholder cooperation and the overarching title is Building Bridges. The idea to this title came after last December's conference, World Conference on International Telecommunication in Dubai, which was a rather acrimonious meeting and there was a generally felt need to get together, to build bridges, to talk to people, to reach out to other people who didn't share necessarily the same opinions. And uh, one of the issues that has been with us since the World Summit on the Information Society is the role of governments in multi-stakeholder cooperation. Uh, before we go into the discussion proper, let me also make some more technical announcements. Uh, we have interpretation in all six languages and the headphones uh, for uh, interpretation are uh, outside this room. So if you want to be prepared, if people and people are encouraged to use their native language or the languages in English, we have interpreters here, but you will need headphones to listen to the interpretation, and they're available outside this room. I would also encourage you to uh, tweet uh, as you can as we go along. The hashtag is IGF2013. And uh, nowadays, if you're not tweetable, you don't exist, as we discussed when we prepared this session. So please do. We also encourage remote participation. We have a remote moderator, and we hope to bring in remote um, uh, participants as often as possible. To uh, shape the discussions, we uh, issued a call for public policy questions. This was a recommendation that came out of a working group for, under the auspices of the Commission for Science and Technology for Development, the CSTD. They recommended that the IGF feed session should focus on two or three policy questions. So we received uh, input and we will put them up on the screen at one point. I don't know yet whether the, this uh, is ready. Uh, and uh, also, we uh, prepared some paper, sheets of paper where you can write down a question you may have, and we have our room helpers who will distribute uh, the sheets. So if anybody wants to write down a question, they can pass them on to our room moderators sitting in the front, uh, Jeanette Hoffman and Matthew Cheers. They will try to moderate the room and group the question if they receive them in advance. But you can also ask for the floor more spontaneously. Having said all that, I will now introduce uh, the panelists. And I start with my, um, to my right. We have a minister from the UK. He is here with us, Ed Vasey. And to the right of him, Ambassador Benedicto Fonseca Filiu from Brazil. And to my left, we have Ambassador Dani Sepulveda from the United States. And to his left, Virat Batia from AT&T 
in India and next to him we have the chairman of the Internet Engineering Task Force, Yari Arko, and on the very left, civil society representative, independent consultant, Avri Doria. Uh, with that, I would invite uh, Minister Vesey to give us his vision of the role of governments in multi-stakeholder cooperation. Please, Minister. Uh, thank you very much. Yesterday I spoke uh, from the podium, but today I'll speak from the panel in order to maintain the huge informality of this session. And I hope that uh, people will feel uh, free to participate, ask questions, heckle, boo, cheer, stand up and applaud when you feel it's appropriate. Um, we are very pleased that the Government of Brazil uh, are leading this important discussion at the IGF. And uh, I'm very grateful that uh, I've been invited to participate in this panel because it gives me an opportunity to put forward the UK government's perspective. We were very interested when Brazil proposed a formal ITU opinion on the role of governments at the World Telecommunications Policy Forum in Geneva in May. And it provoked us. We sat back and thought, well, what is the role of government? We'd never really sat down and uh, articulated it. So this is a great opportunity to do so, and it's a great opportunity at this panel discussion to hear what other people's uh, views are. Uh, in one sense, it's almost indefinable because the role of government is so uh, wide, and as the minister in the UK government responsible for internet policy, as it were, I'm very well aware that uh, at almost every level, uh, internet policy affects uh, all other ministers in the government, whether it's uh, health or education, home office, uh, security, foreign policy, uh, and so on. So uh, one always potentially runs the risk of uh, being too amorphous. But I think um, when you drill down as to where government plays an important role, we've come up with four themes which I hope might help shape the ensuing discussions. Uh, I think the first theme would be obviously to support the building of infrastructure. Uh, in the UK, uh, we are lucky that we have a very competitive telecoms marketplace. So the infrastructure has been built by the private sector, uh, both fiber built by BT and Virgin, but also for mobile operators now busily building out a 4G network. But the competition uh, framework that we've put in place means that this infrastructure is also accessible to most consumers because prices are low and the services they receive are very advanced. But government has intervened directly to support the build-out of networks to places which are not economic, rural areas. So we are putting north of a billion pounds into supporting the build-out of infrastructure. Uh, and again, although the majority of infrastructure is paid for by the private sector, I would emphasize that government sits behind that by providing the regulatory framework to ensure competition and fair pricing. Then I think government, the second point is that government has uh, a role, as it were, to make sure that the domestic le legal framework is fair and consistent. There are many cliches that uh, surround the debate on the internet, and most of them are cliches because they're true. Uh, and one is that what is illegal offline is also illegal online. There's no peculiar exemption if an activity takes place on the Internet that means it should somehow be allowed if it's not allowed uh, in the physical world. But there are also roles for government to update uh, frameworks where uh, a legal issue is peculiar to the Internet. For example, electronic uh, signatures might be a good example of that. And we, uh, we also intervene uh, on particular issues where the Internet has perhaps exacerbated uh, an issue. So the infringement of intellectual property rights, for example, uh, we pass legislation uh, to allow rights holders to warn people if they were infringing intellectual property. Uh, we work with the Internet Watch Foundation to combat the prevalence of child abuse images. And we work with internet service providers to provide parents with uh, 
suitable controls to protect their children from inappropriate content. But again, it's important to emphasize that we work in partnership with the private sector and with civil society because we find that is the most effective way to get things done. Top-down legislation can often be behind the curve, unwieldy, bureaucratic, and if you want an effective result, uh, then it's important to work in partnership. I would also emphasize a, a key principle here, which is that government intervention is not the same as government control. Government can act as a broker, as a representative of its citizens, and it can intervene in issues that are causing great concern. But that is not the same as controlling the Internet. And I think that leads on to my third point, and it won't surprise you that the UK uh, is a strong advocate of the rights of freedom of expression. And I think it's important, therefore, that government plays a role in defending free expression on the Internet, defending cultural diversity, defending gender equality, uh, and also helping its citizens to engage with the Internet by providing them with the opportunities for education and skills that they need to uh, gain access to the Internet. The Internet, as we all know, is a massive force for good, but there are uh, also uh, dangers. And again, government finds it, in the UK, we find it very effective to work with civil society uh, particularly with children at school, to give them the opportunity to ask questions and to learn effectively how to use the Internet and to use the Internet safely. And that, again, is an uh, important role for government. And then finally, it won't surprise you to learn that our fourth principle would be that government can help to support the multi-stakeholder process and partnership uh, working that I think has been at the root of the success of the Internet over the last two decades. We do this by writing checks, by providing financial support for key groups, uh, but also supporting the IGF process. We were the first to set up our own domestic uh, IGF, and by making sure that our presence is felt at important uh, events such as this. So I think, uh, Chairman, if I could sum up, government, of course, has a role, but I hope that I've shown that Throughout all of this, government has a role as a partner, uh, not as uh, someone that dictates how the Internet develops. So we partner with the private sector to build out infrastructure, and we provide funding where the economics don't stack up, and we provide the regulatory framework to ensure that that infrastructure is competitive so that consumers benefit from low prices. We partner uh, with the private sector and civil society on key issues such as the infringement of intellectual property, the protection of our kids online, combating child abuse images. But we also emphasize the point that our legal domestic framework applies to the online world as much as it applies to the offline world. We support strongly freedom of expression on the Internet, and we are active participants and supporters of the multi-stakeholder framework, which we think is essential to the continued success of the Internet. Thank you for not heckling. <laughs> Thank you, Minister. Uh, now, before I turn to Ambassador Fonseca Filiu, uh, for those who were not at the World Telecom Policy Forum in May, organized by the ITU, there was one so-called draft opinion. This is the equivalent of a resolution, more or less, which is the outcome of the WTPF, uh, Brazil put forward on the role of governments. The first draft uh, was, I would say, uh, criticized, or there were many proposals for change, but the Brazilian delegation overnight went back to their hotel room and redrafted it and came forward with a revised opinion that I think many would agree with me would have been agreed by the meeting had there been more time, but basically we ran out of time. And the Secretary General of the ITU said, well, this opinion can now be taken elsewhere, and he explicitly mentioned this meeting here, the IGF meeting, and that was then when we had a meeting shortly thereafter to 
finalize the program, we thought, why don't we take this to the IGF? And here we are now. And over to you, Ambassador. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I thank you for this introduction. Uh, you have uh, rightly pointed to the fact that the uh, draft opinion that emerged from uh, WTPF uh, was uh, the result of extensive consultations we held with uh, uh, different parties, both governments and representatives from other stakeholders that attended the meeting and uh, in doing so, we try to focus on the core uh, ideas we wanted to convey through this uh, draft opinion. And the core ideas are that uh, in recognition of the role and responsibilities government have in the mood stakeholder model, in the mood stakeholder pact, if we could maybe use that expression, uh, we should devise ways through which this role should be uh, operationalized to its full extent. So we are not aiming at expanding the government's role and responsibility to the expense of other stakeholders. Rather, we are uh, recognizing the, 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 the fact that there are different responsibilities and try to device ways through which that could be uh, enhanced. And this came out of the realization that in the context of internet governance uh, discussions, there is very scarce participation on the part of developing countries' representatives, uh, insufficient representation. Uh, I would say not only on the part of governments, but also other uh, stakeholders from developing countries, and particularly from the least developed countries. So this was an attempt to address this situation. Of course, as government, we are proposing uh, from the angle of government uh, how that could be further enhanced and further operationalized the, uh, the participation of governments. But a point that was also made by our delegation is that we view, and since Brazil embraces fully the mood stakeholder approach, that we view legitimacy in engaging the same exercise in regard to other stakeholders. So it is legitimate and I would say necessary and urgent to uh, explore ways through which civil society participation can be further enhanced and particularly I would stress civil society representatives coming from developing countries would like to see more representation from those sectors, private sector coming from other regions can also be further uh, stimulated to participate and uh, uh, benefit from the, the structure we have, from the, the processes we have, and so on. So uh, this, uh, I think the Brazilian proposal has to be seen in that light. It is not exclusive to ITU uh, as well. We initiated it at ITU, but it was made clear that the discussion belonged uh, everywhere. We can discuss how to operationalize the role of government and other stakeholders uh, within any existing uh, institution that deals with Internet. So we are very pleased that at the end we could come up with some core ideas uh, that this was an important notion that could be pursued. And I'd like just to refer briefly to some uh, provisions, the key provisions of what was named the, the Brazilian proposal on operationalizing the role of governments. So basically, we uh, in view that uh, ITU and other international organizations uh, have uh, uh, legitimacy in the process, and they can uh, and should they should support uh, meaningful government participation. So this is also a recognition of the legitimacy of participation of. ITU and other institutions uh, in this process. Uh, Marcus Kummer referred in the beginning to the WICT meeting in Dubai, and we agree it was uh, led to very acrimonious uh, outcome. Uh, it is, and we were, Brazil tried to play uh, uh, an approaching role and uh, facilitator role, as we always try to do uh, in the process. Uh, since we, uh, as is 
may be widely recognized, we share characteristics that enable us to talk to different constitutions, different groups. So I, I would say we have maybe a, uh, with more facility we can engage into, let's say, a mediation exercise. And we try to do that to the benefit of the meeting. At the end, the outcome was not the one we looked for. But we were a bit uh, amazed by the realization that for some parties, even the mention that ITU should have a role in Internet governance was something that raised immediate concerns and uh, rejection. So we, we thought it is uh, some of part of the consensus that emerged from the Tunis agenda should be reaffirmed. The legitimacy of participation of all stakeholders, including international organizations, but also governments, because the same rejection that applies to international organizations to some extent also applies to governments. So uh, this was, uh, let's say, in the origin of the, the proposal. And then we recognized that those organizations can provide meaningful, should assist governments in meaningful participation, but we, at the same time, we reinforce the notion that multi-stakeholder governance of Internet must continue to involve all parties, each in their respective roles and responsibilities. And to that end, all stakeholders should continue to cooperate in good faith. Uh, the, the most, uh, let's say, operative part of the opinion uh, request the, invites the Secretary General to support through the ITU Secretariat capacity building of developing countries, in particular least developed countries, to exercise their rights and fulfill their responsibilities relating to international internet-related public policy issues as per paragraph 35A of the Tunis Agenda, and to continue promoting openness and transparency in the decision-making process within ITU. This is something I'd like to highlight that Brazil fully supports that discussions within ITU on internet governance should be open and transparent. And we are, uh, this is a point we make in, uh, in the context of ITU. Uh, I think this uh, is maybe the, the most important idea. I would like to say this is a living document. We came to the WTPF with a version of the document. It evolved. Uh, we have this present version. It is, I would say, uh, subject to continuous uh, improvements. For example, when we refer to the notion that ITU should contribute to capacity building in regard to uh, the exercise of uh, and the discussion of internet-related public policy issues, we should maybe uh, uh, also have the understanding that this should take place in the context of the areas in which ITU is mandated to operate uh, as, as per the Geneva Plan of Action and its own uh, functions. I don't envision, for example, ITU assisting developing countries in, in intellectual property, or anything that would be, let's say, outside this clear scope of ITU. And that's why this discussion belongs uh, in, in other forums in which particular aspects of Internet governance are, are dealt uh, with. Uh, I'd like just very briefly to refer to the intervention just made by Minister Ed Vesey and to uh, acknowledge the proposal and to thank the UK for this proposal. I think the EU are viewing the issue from a different angle. We are viewing it from the necessity to provide capacity for uh, uh, the role to be operationalized and the UK proposal which we endorse 100 percent points to the, the outcome. Once governments are fully empowered and what is the expected outcome? And I f we would fully concur that these are core uh, roles for government to play this f f facilitation role to provide for uh, the appropriate regulatory and legal framework and uh, to promote freedom of expression, to foster the multi-stakeholder model. So we fully agree, and again, this is uh, maybe a different way to see the kind of idea we wanted to, to convey through our uh, draft uh, opinion. And uh, I think maybe I should stop here at this point. Uh, uh, thank you. And just 
as a very last point to indicate that one of the policy questions that were raised in the context of the uh, preparatory uh, preparation for this meeting uh, within MAG refers to the fact of how uh, participation of governments uh, relates to uh, what we call the self-regulatory uh, uh, bodies, such as IETF and others. And I think it's also a very important uh, point if we could, uh, looking at ways how to operationalize the participation of governments, to, to take into account that in some areas, like those that of self-regulatory agencies, uh, the government of participation as such the, is not what is required in the first place, but the government should be appraised and uh, incorporate also their views in the process. So I think this, the question that was raised, and I would quote, uh, there is a lot to do about governments trying to regulate the Internet through the ITU. A lot of work, however, currently takes place in self-regulatory bodies. Governments may not sufficiently be aware of an important question could be how can governments be integrated in self-regulatory internet bodies so that their concerns are heard and where possible, possibly mitigated without impeding on the economic development and freedom of information flows? Who need to be brought into contact to establish this and where? So I think this is one element that should be clearly also in the picture as we look into ways through which the government, as part of the multi-stakeholder pact, uh, could, could have their, uh, their roles and their responsibilities exercised, full, taking fully into account the fact that, in some cases, those self-regulatory bodies are there. They are doing very important uh, work, and this should be acknowledged by governments uh, and also incorporated fully in their uh, proceedings uh, and not trying maybe to supersede or to compete or to overlap with something that is being done and very well done by, by self-regulatory bodies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And I think uh, the role Brazil played already at the WTPF really helped to build bridges between what were two camps in Dubai. The tone definitely at the WTPF was much more reconciliatory than a few months before. The policy questions, uh, the Ambassador Fonseca of Filho uh, mentioned, they are now up on the screen. You can also find them on the IGF uh, website, uh, and we will get back to them later. But I would agree that question number four is a very central question. Now, before I turn to Ambassador Sepulveda, I noticed that what I said to the beginning, that if you're not tweetable, you don't exist, has already been tweeted. But for copyright purposes, I have to give him the right. He mentioned that when we had our preparatory meeting. So over to you, Ambassador. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the, uh, the recognition. For, uh, <laughs> I want to thank you also for, for having me participate here. I appreciate the minister's comments and the ambassador's comments. I, I also welcome the participation of our friends from civil society, industry, and the technical community. And I look forward to having a two-way dialogue with, in this very large room with our friends who are here as well. Um, I, I was actually at the WTPF in question, and I'm intimately familiar with the Brazilian proposal uh, and the conversation that took place there and the conversation that has taken place since. I think I, I would like to take a step back and, and say a few things. Uh, I, it's perfectly understandable that governments have a very strong interest in having this conversation. The Internet, the, the network itself, the connection between networks, it was initiated a, as a private, grand experiment uh, well over 30 years ago. And today, it's a crucial part of the global economy of free expression and inclusive economic development. So again, naturally, our governments, any government, is going to want to have their people have access to what has become one of the most revolutionary and greatest communications tools of all time. And it has been governed historically under the multi-stakeholder system, which has been under a process of continuous improvement. I don't want to talk about this particular proposal by Brazil or this particular conversation 
as a proposal and a conversation that's taking place that is initiated in a vacuum. It is taking place as we have seen the multi-stakeholder system grow from what was originally really a very small community of technical experts and academics and uh, some research aspects of government to what is now actually a very large community and a very sophisticated system of multi-stakeholder institutions. And we've always worked to improve the transparency of the system and to ensure that it serves the needs of Internet users and their governments and that adapts to the increasingly dy dynamic world in which we live. Over the years, there have been various proposals to suggest that a single intergovernmental body should be enlisted to strengthen the role of governments in existing multi-stakeholder processes or overtake some of those processes. I want to note that the United States respects these ideas. We are members in good standing of the ITU and, and other organizations in which ideas like this have been raised. And we applaud the effort and thought put into these proposals and believe that it reflects a common aspiration uh, to ensure that the multi-stakeholder system includes all stakeholders and all stakeholders are treated equally. But that it is also true that the proposals we have seen to date, setting aside the current proposal that we're discussing uh, relative to, to Brazil, have to, to our mind often presented uh, a challenge in that they would do little to improve global access to the innovative and accessible internet and could even work against that goal if improperly implemented. So it is our point of view that we start from the premise that the multi-stakeholder system has proven itself more successful than any pre-existing model for the deployment and governance of a new technology. That is, that, that is not to say that it's perfect and its improvement is something that all stakeholders have sought from its inception. And we believe that the rising rate of stakeholder participation in the system, uh, for example, at the GAC, in which Brazil and other members of the developing world are active participants and very effective participants, that the rising rates of stakeholder participation in the system proves that the community, the community of stakeholders, has made ongoing and demonstrable improvements toward full inclusion. Ideally, as we move forward with this conversation, any suggestions for further improvement in the Internet governance systems would not just focus on any one institution or narrowly on the role of governments. If, if, that is not, if that is not handled carefully, by focusing on a single institution or by focusing on this one specific stakeholder, you could easily disadvantage other equally important stakeholders. And I take great comfort in, in the ambassador's uh, expression uh, of having this conversation not just at the ITU but in multiple fora with a focus on all stakeholders and ensuring that the, the vibrant civil society and industry communities of the developing world are encouraged to participate in the multi-stakeholder institutions just as much as the, the governments of the developing world. So we will continue to seek to expand that discussion beyond strengthening the hand of, of governments and internet, in internet institutions to ensuring that all stakeholders are paid their due respect and afforded a meaningful and equal opportunity to participate as we will hear from others and as we have heard yesterday, civil society, academia and others have also called for strengthening the rules and we must also address their concerns. We, the United States, fully acknowledge the need to find ways to better integrate governments and other stakeholders from the developing nations into the multi-stakeholder institutions that govern the Internet today. And more importantly, so do those institutions. We applaud Brazil's commitment to the multi-stakeholder governance at home and abroad, the CGI system that they use domestically to manage uh, to manage their Internet issues is a multi-stakeholder system. We offer our hand of friendship in a joint effort to expand the role of all stakeholders from the developing world in the multi-stakeholder process. And we would posit that while the ITU may be one of numerous entities that can assist in that effort, it may not be the best one in, to assist in that effort. I would also like to note, and separately, that uh, we have great ad admiration for the manner in which Brazil uh, pursued the construction of its pending Marco Civil legislation. Uh, it was originally drafted and introduced as a collaborative work. I went to Brazil and met with the bill's author, and he walked me through the transparent process that inclu included open and public debates on the construction of that text. Uh, and, and it produced a call for a free and open Internet in Brazil that the Brazilian government has embraced. Um, we do still have some outlying concerns with potential inclusion of localization 
requirements. But nonetheless, uh, the underlying text and the underlying intent of the Marcos Seville legislation and the effort that Brazil has made to incorporate its civil society and its industry and the construction of that legislation is an admirable one and, uh, and, and we want to commend that. Further, we've followed with great interest the recent news stories about the potential for an internet, an internet summit that would be held in Brazil in April 2014. And I want to take this opportunity with my counterpart, um, the ambassador from Brazil here, to reiterate that Brazil and the United States share a vision of the Internet that ensures freedom of expression, security, and respect for human rights. We also share an interest in strengthening the existing democratic governance structures with inputs from governments, civil society, and the private sector. And given these common principles and vision that the U.S. and Brazil share, I appreciate Brazil's leadership role on this issue, and we look forward to hearing more about what the summit itself will seek to achieve and if there's a way in which we can be of assistance. But as we approach the summit and as we continue this discussion going forward, please understand that the United States government strongly believes that the global community is best positioned to benefit from a vibrant and growing Internet environment where commercial, civil society, and government stakeholders jointly participate in the existing distributed set of Internet institutions, each performing specific tasks without unnecessary duplication or encroachment on the role of others. Again, we welcome this debate. We appreciate the opportunity to engage in, cooperative, in cooperation and collaboration on the challenges we face. And we hope we get, can get to a place where everyone, particularly our friends in the developing world, can fully engage the multi-stakeholder system, helping to bolster its accountability, inclusiveness, and responsiveness to the needs of the global community of Internet users. I hope we can think creatively in order to bring more developing country governments, along with our counterparts in civil society, academia, and industry to the table of our multi-stakeholder institutions. And I hope we can grow and evolve together. After all, that's the point of what's brought us here today. It's a common appreciation for the good that the Internet has enabled and can enable for those who are not yet connected, and an interest in the future of the Internet. So I look forward to working collaboratively with everyone at this table, and again, I very much appreciate the opportunity to share these thoughts. As we move forward in this conversation, if the audience would like to have a more detailed conversation about the text itself, we can do that. Um, and, and again, thank you very much for the opportunity to participate. Thank you. I suggest we move down the table. Without further ado, Virat, would you be next? Thank you, Marcus. Excellencies, um, honorable minister, fellow panelists, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Um, some remarkable points have been made already this morning by um, some very eminent panelists. Um, which strengthen the proposition that I seek your permission to make. Um, the concept of multi-stakeholderism, um, let me say at the outset as we see it from the private sector, includes the business and has the business playing a very vital role as a key stakeholder in the bottom-up, transparent, inclusive Internet governance-related decision-making processes. This is the essence of the Tunis agenda, and to interpret it in any other manner would be to do injustice to this fine document that has withered the test of time, notwithstanding the multiple and significant developments, several IGFs, including this eighth IGF being held in this beautiful city of Bali. Let me elaborate the rationale behind this submission. Close and informed partnership between the government and other multi-stakeholder groups is not only necessary but in fact the condition precedent to an enlightened internet governance approach, and that includes the four themes, uh, well, three of the four themes laid out by the Honorable Minister from UK. Governments often try to balance many competing priorities in their role to implement and enforce policies in national and public interest. However, in the internet world, somewhat different from the old traditional telecom world, the government is neither a big player itself in most cases, nor does it have years of accumulated technical and economic capacity to manage this piece on its own. This distinction is important between Internet and traditional telecommunications, and the Tunis agenda must be seen from the prism of this fine distinction, as should be the role of 
global multilaterals such as the ITU. The government is not always very close to the facts of the various stakeholders that the government represents, whether the private sector, the technical community, the civil society, and especially the youth. Sometimes a new policy initiative sounds like a tremendous and a simple idea, but in fact that policy can have chain reactions that can unintendedly disrupt other processes and assumptions and by consequence the work of other stakeholder groups. That's because policy could be based on a set of incomplete understanding of the current environment or simply a wrong set of assumptions and therefore ongoing engagement, not just consultation, but including, including the inputs provided by various stakeholders is crucial. So the government with its tremendous responsibility on its shoulders must move very carefully and deliberately with a well-informed understanding and an openness to consult, engage, and include the inputs from industry, technical communities, and civil society. It is precisely for these reasons why multi-stakeholder institutions are of such great value. They have mechanisms built in to ensure that the dialogue must happen, and in turn, this is the biggest risk that faces traditional multilateral institutions based on policy making where only governments have a formal role. There is a risk in a multilateral fora and intergovernmental bodies whose importance is otherwise second to none that the essential consultative process and the process of including the inputs between the governments and other multi-stakeholder processes may not occur in a complete or a meaningful or a timely manner. Each one of those is important if the roles have to be performed in the manner that we expect them to be and be meaningful. This is particularly vital in the field such as Internet, where no doubt there are important government policy concerns, but also the actual management of infrastructure, network, devices, spectrum, and several other resources, as well as the whole concept of permissionless innovation is undertaken by a multiple set of stakeholders outside the government. Let me reference the WISIS for a moment. It is always clear from the WISIS that the issue is not government versus multi-stakeholder. That's a false distinction. It has always been each entity participating according to its mandate and expertise. Government and other stakeholder groups have different and complementary mandates and expertise. The day-to-day -day technical operations of Internet were never understood to be the mandate of the governments, but rather the mandate of Internet technical communities, which in most cases are also understood to be the private sector. However, it has always been understood that the governments have a key role in the development and implementation of policy, as was laid out by the Honorable Minister from UK. But the framework, including the legal framework, as I had submitted for your consideration, and in doing so, the government must rely on all members of the Internet community to develop the best and the most complete public policy. This point was underscored by the understanding that Internet governance is much broader than domain name systems, its value, culture, policy, technical operation that comprises the Internet. As such, an effective Internet ecosystem must rely on all parts of the society, the government, the private sector, and the civil society, according to their expertise and mandate. Let me close this comment by re-emphasizing that the multi-stakeholder governance is therefore a system by which all Internet ecosystem participants, including the government, in their mandate and expertise, work on an equal footing for the greater benefit for a stable and innovative Internet environment. I would, in addition, place an additional responsibility on the government, especially in cases where a strong culture for consultation and inclusion of views does not exist. That is precisely in these situations that the government should not only embrace multi-stakeholderism, which goes beyond consultation and into a meaningful engagement, but in fact act as a facilitator and a catalyst of multi-stakeholder bottom-up, inclusive, transparent decision-making processes for Internet governance. Thank you, Chair.
Thank you very much. That was Virat Bhatia speaking and not Yari Arko. The scribes followed the uh, list of speakers we had circulated before. Uh, please make sure that for the archives you correct this and make sure that it was Virat Bhatia. We now turn to Yari Arko, the chairman of the ITF. Please, Yari. So I actually think <coughs> the, if, if the minutes show that that previous speech was from me, that, that would have been very good, very wise words. Thank you. Um, so th thank you, Marcus, and, and good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for the opportunity to talk, and many wise words have already been said. Um, and I'm sort of struggling a little bit to f um, figure out what, what to say in addition, um, but um, as a representative of the technical community, I uh, look at this from the angle of um, what kind of cooperation we need from, with the governments and uh, you know, from a very practical perspective. Um, and I wanted to raise three comments, basically. First, historically, the Internet technology was largely under the radar and there was little need for regulation, policies, or government involvement. Fast forward to 2013, the Internet is critical to all of our daily lives. Now we are finding in the technical community that there are areas where there's a need to discuss between the governments and, and ourselves. Um, the engineers at the ITF and elsewhere have realized that they cannot work on the technology alone in all cases and that things like emergency calls are something that we have to work on in the larger community. Standards in this area are, of course, safety critical. Uh, it's also very much a case for needing one standard for the whole world, as otherwise when I travel from Finland with my smart device here to Bali, um, it might not be able to do um, uh, emergency call here. Another example is technology for dynamic radio frequency allocation using something we call white space for wireless communications. The technical community is not in the business of deciding what frequencies are white space or setting the requirements on how static, static or dynamic allocation happens governments and intergovernmental bodies are. But the technical community is building the protocol components for the dynamic negotiation between an access point and an administrative agency, um, such as the, the effort that we have at the ITF um, called PAUSE, the PAUSE Working Group. We need to understand the requirements for this functionality and the various agencies need to be comfortable with the types of solutions being built. My second point is that um, we all talk about how the Internet has enabled incredible innovation. And um, when we talk about governance issues or the involvement of governments this week, it is important to think about them in terms of what, what the future will bring and not just the today's Internet. I wanted to highlight something that we see in the technical community very well um, and at the ITF as well. The speed of innovation is increasing. For instance, the web protocol stack is undergoing significant change with HTTP 2.0. Voice over IP is moving to browsers um, with something called WebRTC. Uh, the Internet of Things is coming to many, many devices around us. Um, fundamental changes even in the basic networking standards are on the way, such as moving from IPv4 to IPv6. And, and the point that I want to make is that many of these changes have fundamental impacts to Internet government, governance and, and the way that various players, including governments, need to view them. Governing an almost limitless address space is very different from governing uh, scarcity. Uh, having any web server be capable of becoming a voice provider will make it difficult to regulate voice traffic. So these are real trends that are happening today. And, and my third and, third and final point is that I want to talk about the practical issues in working together between the government and the internet the technical community. I think all of us have, have realized that we need to do that and we need to do more of that than we have done in the past. We have the motivation, but there are a number of practical issues. First is use a little knowledge of what the other side does. I do not have the full picture of how government address technical issues or how regulation processes work. Similarly, the governments have historically talked to other types of organizations about technical or telecommunications matters. Now the situation today is quite different. Um, the, the world has changed. Uh, most of the work on internet technology is elsewhere. Um, standards organizations are different and may even work in different ways. We both need to learn how the other side works. For instance, at the ITF we have an open model where anyone can contribute and our standards are um, 
uh, adopted by voluntary basis. So in summary, my main point is that that uh, I'm not so interested in discussing or maybe the question of what organization all this belongs to is, is not so interesting as the actual work. I and mean, there's a lot of exchanges that have to be done um, between the different sides. And a lot of practical discussion has to happen. A lot of learning has to happen. And, and that's the important thing. Thank you. Thank you, Yari. This is actually the first time an ITF chair is attending an IGF meeting. And addressing an IGF meeting, and in many ways I would consider the IGF is the policy equivalent to the IETF. We don't take decisions. We have a rough consensus approach here as well. Over to you, Avri, civil society perspective with a strong technical background. Thank you. I'm actually quite pleased to be up here with all these gentlemen in Bali, and and um, I, I need to point out at one point I was sort of introduced as a representative of civil society. And to keep myself out of trouble, I must indeed say that my comments have not been reviewed by anyone in civil society. And in fact, I come with sort of a luxury of having been a civil society participant in policy world such as I can, in technical world such as IETF and the IGFs, etc. So I, I'm actually given quite a luxury of sort of looking. When I look at the role of governments, I, I have to admit that I came to the acceptance of governments having a role very late in life. Um, and my first reaction for many years was, why? Why would they have a role? Now, over the years of, of, of IGF and such, and, and having listened to, to, to many wise ambassadors, ministers, and chairmen, I've actually come to accept that there is a role. But in looking at that role, I, I, I look for where would that role grow from? What, where would, what would be the origin of a government role? One of the first things that comes to my mind in terms of looking at a role for governments is indeed human rights and universal declarations of human rights and, and other instruments that have made the governments responsible for protecting our rights, protecting our rights in the non-internet world and protecting our rights on the internet. So that role of theirs as a protector of our rights does indeed mean that they really do have a role and I see that role as stemming from that. But in terms of, of understanding how that role can be played and how that role can, can be developed really depends on the degree to which they are defending those rights, the degree to which they are supporting a multi-stakeholder process that can be seen as growing out of our right to participate, to associate, to express, to learn, to share knowledge. So, Insofar as they protect us, insofar as they further the, the enterprise, indeed governments do have an important role. But that role really needs to be gauged by the degree to which they are indeed serving the, the, the people of the world, serving the people of their countries. The governments have come to the Internet sort of late. And, and, and so in, in that role, very often we, we do an analogy to the role that they took in telecommunications and have tried to sort of impose the role they took in telecommunications on the ideas of the Internet. Now, as we sit here on this panel, I'm very relieved to hear sort of that hasn't been the position of anyone on this panel, and yet I, I do have concern that that, that that is still the position of many in many governments and, and believe it's something that we, that we need to be careful of. 